to uh, do three three things. Um, we're going to define left and right limits and see how that um, helps us with a more formal definition of um, more formal de definition of limits. Carries over to a formal definition of continuity, and, and this this lecture uh, is, is entirely conceptual. Uh, so that we won't be looking at equations, though that you will in your problems. But this is just to conceptually understand what's going on. So let's let's imagine you know, we have some function that looks. So, if we talk about left and right limits, or left-handed limits, left-handed limits is saying, you know, what is the function getting close to as x gets close to a from the left side? So, as we get closer and closer to a from the left side, what is f of a getting close to? And um, the way that we write this is the limit x approaches a from the left side, so negative side, from negative being the left side of f of a, or I'm sorry, left of x. So as x approaches a from the left side, what's my function approaching? Well, um, clearly, you know, as we get closer and closer to a from the left side, it's approaching 1, so it equals 1. And what about if I am approaching from the right-handed side. So now, you know, if I think about coming from the right side, you know, the limit is the right-handed. The limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x. Well, as it approaches from, you know, the right side, as we get closer and closer to a, my function is approaching 2. So we've got two limits. We've got the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit. And just to kind of have the notation down, you know, the left hand limit is the limit as x approaches a from the negative side of f of x. And the right-hand limit is the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x. So let's, let's uh, use this idea to define limit. So the limit is the definition for limit. Um, limit as x approaches a of f of x exists if and only if the limit as x approaches a from the negative side of f of x equals the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x. In other words, as we come from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we must approach the same thing. So let's, let's look at an example of um, limits existing and not existing. So here's some functions. And we've got a removable discontinuity here. Um, let's call this sub A. And then we've got a trunk continuity here and here. Let's call this A2, 1, and 2. So if we go through all the limits, the limit as x approaches A from the negative side of f of x equals negative 2. And the limit as x approaches a from the positive side of f of x also equals negative 2. And again, to show that you know, as we get close to a from the negative side and from the positive side, we're approaching the same value of negative 2. So since the limit as x approaches a from the 
negative side and from the positive side both equal the same fitting, we can then say the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals negative 2 and it exists. However, if we look at um, the limit at b, It certainly looks continuous because we don't need to lift our pen to draw it. But, you know, defining this continuity, uh, what needs to be met? So the following three conditions need to be met. First condition. The limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist. single value uh, in between A and B, which is my interval, uh, the limit must exist as a function. The second thing, F of C must exist. 
this for all values of C between B and A. So the function must be defined at every single point. In the third case, the third case that we look at is that looks like. So, you know, we've got some function that looks like this with a removable discontinuity. And let's call this, you know, say that's one, this is two, and this is uh, one. So, it's clear that it's, it's continuous at every point. Uh, at one, there's, some, there's something going on. So, at one, maybe it's not continuous. It just certainly seems like there's a hole and uh, a point has been like a, a strangely extracted up there. Uh, so, you know, using our formal definition of continuity, what we can say is, well, for all values, you know, looking at the range between negative infinity and negative infinity, the limit as x approaches c um, of f of x, it exists everywhere. Clearly exists everywhere uh, because you know as I come, as I come from you know the right point or sorry from the left to the right I approach the same point as I come from the left to the right I approach the same point as I come from the left to the right I approach the same point so the limit exists everywhere the function is defined everywhere the only place where it's kind of strange uh, is at f of one. C exists everywhere. So it's satisfying the first two conditions, but the third condition is not met. The third condition uh, is that the limit as x approaches C, and in this case let's use 1 because this is a weird point, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not equal f of 1. What we should have is 1 equals 2, and we know that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x Therefore, um, this condition is not met. So what we can say is f of x is not continuous. So this is just um, a, a, a conceptual idea. And it's important for you to be very familiar with the formal definition of continuity, even though it's, it's pretty intuitive uh, on a lot of problems you'll be asked to say, to defend, you know, the question is to defend why the function is continuous or whether it's not continuous. And what the, the what I will be looking for, or whoever is grading your test will be looking for, is for you to defend your answer using, using you know, these three rules as, as a means for um, uh, defending your answer. So that is uh, left and right hand limits, formal definition of limits, and a formal definition of continuity.